Okay, so we're basically started, I guess, in a way. Oh, we are? Yeah, okay. this is it. All right, so cool. we read uh, The Founding and Manifesto of Futurism. I fucking love this shit by F.T. Marinetti, fucking 1909. Uh, well, yep. well, he wrote it in Paris. <laughs> Get yeah. That? Yeah. The um, movement that like took over Italy started, started, in, started Paris in Paris. Yeah. By a man that was born in Egypt. Oh, he was born in Egypt? <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> You didn't pick like yeah he taught he's born in Egypt. If you look at the, at the beginning of this when he talks about him and his friends sitting beneath mosque lamps. Oh, that, that's that, what that was in reference to. Yeah, so like okay. things he would probably have in his house. But also, I have another theory about that too. But also, he mentions later on his uh, uh his Sudanese nurse when he was younger and shit. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, he's pretty proud about being Egyptian too, as proud as he is about being Italian. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah. He's an interesting character. Yeah, right. What was your all, first impression? All, um, he, that he's a maniac. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I was watching videos. Okay, what'd you say uh, of him before I, I actually read the actual manifesto? Um, I mean, the most memorable thing was what I mentioned before was how he would he was trying to. <laughs> I think the thrust of futurism was trying to getting away from art that was transcendental or not based in like the present or in life. And that also translated into like trying to dissolve the, by the division between the audience and the artist. And so he would like glue people to their seats and like incite fights and shit and do all this like crazy stuff. I don't know if he, if, he likes violence. I don't know if he would yeah. purposely incite fighting as much as just what he said and his attitude yeah. and him as a person would piss people <laughs> off and enrage them. <laughs> and like the things that they were doing were like pretty like on the avant garde and like they were they were doing uh they were pissing a lot of people off, like all over the place. Yeah. I th- I think yeah, I mean they're contrarians, I would say. And I don't even mean that in a disparaging way, because I feel like what I took away from sort of like the the core of futurism is that it's more of like a position or a posture than like something with like a prescription or like a program of like you know this is what is right and this is what we should do because it's always based on sort of like a rejection of tradition and so just by default it can't ever become a mass movement or integrated into society oh no it definitely fucking did those, but, n- those well, niggas went on tour around the world. Yeah. But no, but they even say in the manifesto, right? At the end, he's like, we want to be, what does he say? We only have like 10 years left at the age of 20 or 30. They want to be displaced. Yeah. But not like, not like, all, like they won't, they, by that time, they wouldn't be the only futurists. Right. Like, the younger futurists would come in. And what, what did he say? <clears throat> with a, with a hatred uh, that's like fueled with like, love and adoration like yeah take them out <laughs> <laughs> but if they were if they were incorporated into like mass society i feel like that will kind of st- stand that, w- that would be sort of contradictory to the spirit of futurism at least that's how it seemed to me in my very cursory reading of it i think they did have a lot of influence in society though because they got people to sign up and go to war yeah no you no I'm, I'm not talking about like their oh, you think autobiographical just like- life just like the spirit of futurism as an idea that they're sort of like trafficking in, in, in a text. No, n- n- the, the point isn't even like, I'm not trying to be like, Oh, you said this, but you mm-hmm. did this. No, no. It's more so just like, it, it seemed to me that like futurism is very, it's very much a product or like a baby of the times that that's always standing like in response to what's happening. And so yeah. it, it's, it's more of like a position than sort of like a program or like a, or like a, some critique with some essential core i get that yeah this is interesting because like i look at it as like it as an art movement and yeah for sure that it completely changed and lit a fire in everyone's ass yeah and like if you look at other art movements at that time or people that were writing about futurism like like Yoma Polinaire and shit, like he's like, oh, they're just copying the French, like Hubis or this or that, or like, mm-hmm. and and like, if you look at like the uh, the vort like vorticism in England and shit, like the, mm-hmm. they were all like, oh, 
they changed their whole thing like vorticism like the vortex and everything sounds a lot like velocity and fucking speed and futurism you know but like they they changed their whole thing like like marinetti would go around places influence people and then like the people would either like reject it or not but like either way the influence was there you know and even if people were doing different things like his boisterousness and like his his crazy like pride and like like aggression would be the force to get people to do other things you know what i mean like the russian futurists were definitely completely inspired by italian futurism but then they like they rejected it like every place they went like would get inspired and then like reject and be like oh we're doing our own thing which i guess in a way is pretty futurist to do in 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 the sense you know what i mean but like i i think italian futurism is def like if if it wasn't if it wasn't for them in that position of art history or history in general like i think things would be a lot fucking different you know like i can't i can't imagine them taking out of history and then not like changing everything you mean like in the context of world history i think so yeah yeah i could i could see that i mean when i was reading it i was thinking how you know we live we not only live in the wake of the impact of futurism, Italian futurism, and it's like different permutations across the world, but I, I think it's also coming back. You know, I think it's making a pretty like vigorous return. Not not in terms of when I say that, I mean not in terms of like the art movement, mm -hmm. but I guess the futurism in the sense of, in, in sort of the the political aspects of futurism like how to think about like a society's relationship to tr to tradition okay. versus yeah versus that's the future interesting. yeah that's an interesting way to think about it yeah because i think like huh. something that this really made me think about was how at different points in time like a culture or a people they have a, a specific way of thinking about the future, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's never a given. Like, if of course, like everyone knows, like yeah, like the after today comes tomorrow, and then the next decade. Like there's that, but the idea that like a future is something that holds possibilities and potential, and it's something to look forward to, like that's totally not a given, right? You know, like even in like the Christian tradition, like it's seen as you know you're moving away from like the the innocence of god or something um that, that's like a super like wide generalization but it's interesting because like when i read this i was thinking of like the time period that it was written in okay and so like so you know like industrialization happens mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in 18th century england but it's not really until the 19th century that it's like proliferating around the world and it's a really crazy time because like for because you know like new technologies are proliferating and like different cities but also like different types of political um different types of like political organizations yeah. are emerging and like there are all these like groups that are trafficking trafficking in these like really radical utopian visions of society from like you know liberalism and capitalism or fascism or anarchism and socialism mm -hmm. and so you know there is like this optimism and this optimism and just like relationship to the future that's very like oh you know what what does this hold you know that's very much a product of the times and i think like the in the i'd say like in the middle of the 20th century there's like a break with that with that sort of re relationship and i'm not yeah. cultural historian in the sense so i can't talk in these well, like that like like the like people moved away from an optimism yeah like you know world war Two and like the holocaust i mm -hmm. think that that's the biggest one like the rise of like apartheid and fascism you know people and, and even like if you go like a decade later you know you see like for the first time the emergence of like an environmental consciousness at least okay, in america yeah, where yeah. like the consequences of like industrial society for the first time are really being brought to bear and that like, the future isn't like this like infinite progression people are like oh shit you know like like shit can happen <laughs> yeah <laughs> like th like this is, yeah like we're this isn't like we shouldn't be optimistic uh, about like how the, the way things are 
And so, like, that was sort of, like, the, I guess, the temporal context in which I was, like, reading this manifesto. It's, like, these people that were on the precipice of, like, this crazy time, right, where, like, a lot of significant changes were happening and were, like, were about to happen. I mean, like, they're all, like... They're seeing all this change happen, and they're they they're all taking an active part in it. You know what I mean? And feel like they have a part in it. It's like this is also when everything is opening up. You know, I I I like to make um this connection where it's like the more like art became like abstract and open, and 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 uh, less like less of a pictorial representation of something exactly and, and became like became abstracted, you know, became something new. Like its borders were shifted and changed in art. The more the borders and art were, were open and let loose and shifting and changing. So was the world. And then like those, like as artists and it put their experience and ideas in the artwork and then that's opening it up and then people are able to come in while with their experience, while they're experiencing the artwork and, and mm-hmm. trading this, um, different ideas and, and different ideologies or whatever, you know, like that's also happening in the world at large at the same time, maybe on like a social and political level too. So it's like, it's this weird reflection. And I think it's like, I don't know, maybe just because my, my look is coming from the art view. Like I feel like, Oh yeah. Like the artists are responsible for people being able like to opening up and having this like, being like oh i can like there like the, the future is open and i can fucking form this you know what i mean yeah but maybe that that's like it with everything in the world it might just been that time you know but maybe somewhere along the line probably where you're saying like after world war ii like people maybe there was a break you know with like trusting artists or trusting like like academic and shit like that like a weird break of things because also at that time like different um like different like departments and, and, and types of, everything was coming together like you know you're mixing things you're mixing different like different ways of like thinking everything is mixed together like you're it's 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 like 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 theory and psychology and blah 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 you know what i mean and then like now i think maybe we're, we're splitting things a little bit or there was maybe an effort to split things after it got too fucking crazy yeah. you know yeah i think for the first time people really question in like a large-scale way like the consequences of quote unquote progress. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that, yeah. Um, I think that's when it really first entered into like a sort of global consciousness, which makes sense. Cause this is the first, this is when, you know, society is becoming a like world system. Yeah. And you know, you say like progress and then I think, I think of that with movement, you know, and it's like, mm-hmm. if we look at the different art movements at that time, there's a relationship between all of them and movement, you know, future for sure. You have movement. Um, if we want to look at like stuff that's going on in, in France, like at the early 1900s, it's like, you have like, like impressionistic type stuff and abstract impressionism, whatever, you know, like, but they're working like their manifestos and stuff or, or their writings and their essays are going like their movement is in the language of music and symphonies and shit, right? So you have that weird movement of things going around. You have England and vorticism. There's this movement, you know? Like, everything has this It's this weird thing. Even we want to look at, like, uh, surrealism. Like, if we want to think of uh, automatism, you're being, mm-hmm. like, it's this automatic movement. There's there's this language of, of like, this, this, like, fucking, like, like literary aesthetic language of, of, of moving. You know, and that's it's really it's really fascinating to look at at that time. So maybe maybe the movement was like too fast or too much. And people are now like, stop, you know, like it, maybe it's even related in, in the way that we look at, like how fast technology moves now. You know, mm-hmm. it's like, fuck, if you're not up on something, you're, you're left. Right. Yeah. I mean, the rate of change is crazy and the the rate of the rate of change like (laughs) (laughs) no no no, that's excellent (laughs) 
what the hell were we talking about? The rate of the rate of change. <laughs> 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 no, during the new shit movement. No. Um, yeah. No, no, I was going to no, I was just going to say like the technological changes that are happening mm-hmm. are, are it's just so unprecedented and you can't keep track of it. But also like the rate at which these changes are happening cuz before I would say like these paradigm shifting changes were happening like you know within generations or maybe even centuries Mm -hmm. and now it's like i i think i don't even think that there is much of a like kinship between generations i mean there still is but i would say it's going to keep um slimming down into like decades right because when you're people who are people who are decades apart they're born into different worlds you know, technologically, at at least at the pace that we're going at now. Yes, there's a a split and a disconnect between things. And do you think that that's, um, it's becoming quicker that that develops? Yeah, for sure. And I think like people are feeling the consequences of that. <clears throat> and you know, the the consequences of technologies, particularly the environmental consequences, you know, like climate change, I think they weigh heavy on people's minds and people want a vision of the future that, you know, they can cling to. And I think that kind of comes back to like, you know, different, how different peoples throughout time have a relationship to the future. Mm -hmm. I think like, you know, the sort of fervor around like Elon Musk, for example, you know, I think, I think that's exactly what that represents, you know, because Elon Musk is able to offer like a futurism or a vision of the future. That's actually something like to look forward to, you know, that's not like mired and saturated and like climate change and catastrophe, but rather like going to Mars and, you know, whatever, <laughs> whatever else his ideas are. If uh, you had to choose between one of the two people to be king of the future, would it be Elon Musk or Marinetti? Oh man, dude, that's hard. Um, and like you'd be good, like whatever future they create, like you, you'd be. Oh yeah, no, yeah, no doubt. Yeah, yeah, (laughs) it'd be utopia. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I'm saying you, you, it might but not be utopia for other people, but you'd be good because you'd be one of their boys. So like, who, who would you choose? Yeah, I mean, I mean, Tesla stock did me pretty well (laughs) two months ago, so (laughs) I feel a little bit of loyalty. (laughs) So yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go with Musk. And, you know, I, I appreciate his tweets. They're uh, nice you know, tweets. A, as insufferable as, as he is, but, you know. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, so. But, I mean, Marinetti's pretty base, too. I mean, like, have you seen the pictures of Marinetti? Like, he looks like oh, he doesn't dude, give he a fuck. Oh, dude, he looks great, yeah. It's true. All right, so, right at the beginning of this, right, like. Mm-hmm. Wait, before before yeah, yeah. we even go in. Yeah, yeah. Because, like, this, this, is, this is your territory, This is, right? okay, like, when I was introduced to futurism, like. I was like, nigga, what have you done to the yeah. professor? You know, it's, just, <laughs> it's like, like he he's the futurist scholar. Like he actually just, uh, his book just came out on futurism. Oh, cool. And, What's the name of him? Uh, the name of the professor? Oh, David Mather. Okay. And cool. um, he, in his book, what I'm understanding from the intro um, is that he's actually looking that futurism's influences were actually coming from uh, photography at the time and not from like speed in the machine so much but that that's like another thing it's actually really good he puts up a really fucking good argument from just even from the um the intro for but sure yeah like when i think for anyone that is like like even beyond an artist i think just like like futurism as a thing like if you're trying to like make an identity for yourself or not even identity, like make what you want to do in life and feel like it's yours and kind of like, you don't want to worry about what the fuck everyone else is saying or telling you to do. Futurism is, it's it's inspiring as fuck. Like it's extremely inspiring. Yeah. No, I mean, I felt it while reading this, you know, Mm -hmm. like there's a lot of fervor and zeal, you know, like that's like behind you know Marinetti and sort of just the movement that he represents. I think that's because it's coming from like he's a poet, you know, for and sure. He, and he's he's coming at it from that. Like he's not an academic, you know, wasn't mm-hmm. like a like he wasn't a politician or anything. Like this nigga was a poet, and he's coming at it from that level. And then like you know, poetry is dangerous because like 
how it can touch people. You know what I mean? Like you're yeah. breaking all the rules. You can break every rule. Like the tie puts poetry as like one of the, the highest, like fucking like, like, like expenditures, you know, like mm-hmm. one of the highest evils, the highest taboo things, you know, cause, cause like what you can do, you just, you just throw some things together that don't even like, like you, you have one experience, one situation, you throw a couple of different things together, just like destroy their outlet, like, like just, just, blur their outline of of two different say words you know or two different ways to describe something you bring it together in one thing and it literally creates something new and because like it's poetry and not regular writing you don't have to worry about the rules of anything like you're creating it as you go but somehow somehow it touches people on this other level you know like where um i think it was kandinsky was talking about like how painting touches like painting um and color well, reacts to the body like like a piano and keys and you know what i mean but it's like in that sense poetry done in the right way where it's not all corny and shit when you mm-hmm. have the violence and the aggression that marinetti <laughs> speaks about <laughs> then you can really touch somebody yeah what i'm saying is is uh is fuck slam poetry <laughs> That's where I thought you were going. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know me very well. <laughs> um, so, I mean, for people who don't aren't too familiar with futurism mm-hmm. as an art movement, and I would include myself in it because I really didn't know anything before reading this manifesto or the context behind it. Like, what... What is like? What's going on in the moment when Marinetti I- is writing this, and like, what, what to you? What do you think captures the spirit, or the essence of futurism? Movement is the first thing that comes to my mind. Yeah, yeah, movement, technology, and the desire to escape confinement whatever that is mm. in which that's like <laughs> that desire is like in everything at this time art movement wise yeah. you know like it's really weird too like how how mystical it is you know mm-hmm. like he even he even he mentions it even in here like shit the beginning of this like he mm-hmm. he's if you look at the words that he's using um you know like when he's speaking of their souls and shit like that, like we'll, we'll, we'll touch it when we jump into here, but like, it's this desire to escape confinement. It's this yeah. movement and it's this, it's continual fucking movement, but it's like this, I think it's this desire of something personal, you know, mm-hmm. but definitely like to not be confined in movement. And like, they, they were definitely influenced by like the Cubist and shit, you know, for they, sure. They were influenced by, um, by France, you know, like and, and the and the other art moves before that time. So, but because of futurism, you can give them a big fuck you and be like, "I'm doing it on my own. <laughs> I don't know you. I've never seen you before, fam. What are you doing? This yeah. is us. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, I think yeah. Like, there's like that. So, there's that spirit of insurgency and rebelliousness to futurism. But I think what's really interesting about it is that it's not, or it's not a reform or like reformation movement by like any stretch of the means right because i I remember yeah i remember you telling me um that you know futurism like the futurists they were sort of like come into you know come into their own with the spirit of like burn everything down yeah right and at first (laughs) i thought you're just being a little overzealous no but you read (laughs) it (laughs) no yeah no because what's super interesting is that they i mean they're their whole posture is to obliterate history, right? And, and obliterate tradition <laughs> and to like, create, you know, from, from the ashes or from the crucible forge. Making, yeah. Like something completely new. Right. That's, yeah, it's kind of amazing. And I think that's what he's doing here with this manifesto, right? Like it's, sure. it's a myth building. And it also, if, if you check like the language that he's using, there's this like, you know, over reading this again today, I found like this hard, like constant death aesthetic in in his language. You know what I mean? But like using that as like, you know, danger, 
which he he's, he talks about the love of danger later on and it's like that danger inspires this risk and then like your survival of that experience if you go for it is like a rebirth you know so this constant constant break it down renew like over and over again keep rebuild like keep building new keep building new keep making keep making like going on like just fuck the stagnation you know i guess really growing up around like all those types of museums tours all this history around you and just being fucking confined in it and not having the feeling that you can make something new without being compared to the old masters of the past it's like like, fuck them fuck caravaggio Fuck Da Vinci's bitch ass. Fuck Michelangelo. <laughs> fuck, 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 fuck Jutaleski. Like all of them. You know what I mean? Like yeah, burn it down. Make make it new. I mean, there's a point in the manifesto where uh, he writes, he compares Italy. He says, for too long, Italy has been a flea market. Yeah, we intend to liberate it from the countless museums that have covered it like so many cemeteries. Mm-hmm. And then he says, you know, muse- museums and cemeteries are identical. Yeah, like there's no different. Yeah, and it it's really. It's really interesting um, for me, just from like learning about the history and like what was the historical impetus or thrust behind this was like in the context of like art, literature, culture, but also national identity. Mm-hmm. Italy was sort of stuck, right? Like they were yeah, they were yeah, in this yeah, point of be- stagnation where mm-hmm. they were like they felt just completely obliged and tethered to like the glory of the past roman empire and latin culture and that's what made up their national identity right yeah and le- and like these guys were trying to it seems to me like what catalyzed them was they were trying to rescue italy that's from, what they wanted to do right yeah. Fr- from like, this like back look backwards towards nostalgia it's like the youth can have something that they can actually like call their own and new you know yeah it's so inspiring it's fucking crazy but it's yeah. very inspiring. You know what I mean? For like, sure. Like just in, in the language, I remember like sitting there and it's like, oh, like comparing the museum to a cemetery, a dormitory or an absurd <laughs> slaughterhouse, you know? And like comparing like, um, like, like they want new life and not a cancerous allegiance to the past. And it's like, like teachers and tour guides and all these people, like he calls them fucking cancer, mm-hmm. you know? <laughs> <laughs> it, it must have been also, and again, like I'm not, a historian of Italy or anything, but I, I imagine, um, you know, there, there was this sort of inferiority complex of Italians as they watch the rest of Europe, particularly yeah. Western Europe, like develop in, into these like really industrialized countries and empires and Italy had just unified and they were just super divided economically, culturally and politically. And, and you know, these guys are just like, like what the fuck like it's what move on it yeah no i'm and and like you know italy is still sort of looking back towards towards rome as sort of like you know th- this is what we have so this see is that, who we are so it makes it so interesting to like i so when i learned about futurism it was in context with afrofuturism italian futurism and russian futurism right interesting. and surprisingly the italian futurism and afrofuturism i wouldn't even say surprisingly like that that piece right there of everybody moving forward mm-hmm. and and then like the people the movement relying too much or being too tethered to the past was very much there in afrofuturism with sun ra in his writings like and it's interesting to think about it like especially with sun ra like i think a lot of people try to like tie him to like like oh, like, Afrocentric this and that, like, oh, up for, like, the people, whatever. Like, motherfucker was like, yo, y'all niggas are left behind, and the world will never make it to the future unless you don't pick up your shit and let's go. Like, he's like, drop the shit. We need to be, like, on a higher human level, everybody. And we can't get to that level if everyone, like, if there's people that are if slacking behind. We got to go to the future. You know, he's like, let's go. Let's get to space, man. What are we doing? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and that that's that was fucking cool as shit. And like I like that 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 emotion is there. You know what I mean? And like I think it's just, you know, a couple decades later really. But he was definitely inspired by some shit too because like we know that like different esoteric traditions and shit like that that was 
that was there, you know, and it was mm-hmm. a nice bed for that shit. And Sun Ra was all about that, you know. Very interesting stuff. Yeah. Maniac leaders, what's up with them? <laughs> I th- I I think what's you know, as much as I disagree <laughs> with some of the things Martin Eddie wrote. <laughs> um what I did respect was the fact that him and his, I guess, his cohort, right? Because it was him and, like, f- I think four or five others. Yeah, it was a group uh, of dudes. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. who were at the center of the futurist movement was, um, I mean, they, they walked the walk, you know? Yeah. It, as f- insofar as, like, what they preached. Because when I saw that they were, like, <laughs> glorifying war, I, was, I, I mean, on the one hand, I'm like, fuck that. But but I was also like, oh, I bet these dudes are like, you know, just some intelligentsia, you know, they're like super far removed yeah. from war. But then like, but then I read that like, you know, Marinetti, he was a war correspondent in Libya during Italy's invasion of Tripoli. And then he worked as a journalist during the Balkan War. And then there was the other guy, you probably know his name, um, the one who he, he was killed. Uh, I think at a pretty young age. I'm not sure. I, I look at Marinetti and Pratella and Luigi. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I just remember reading um, one of them was killed, and that sort of signaled the quote-unquote end of the first wave of Italian futurism before okay. Marinetti kind of, like, revived it. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. But, yeah, no, I mean, these these dudes, they went. They, they were they were for real. Like, when World War I um, started, like, they, they were, like, <laughs> they, they were hype. <laughs> <laughs> They pushed for it really, really hard. And they yeah. were like, there's an, oh my gosh, we have to read the other, re- like, there's another uh, one where Marinetti's like, it's addressed to like all the youth in Italy. He's like, don't you guys want to have guns? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yo, son, like, you could be a hero. <laughs> it's it's wild. Um, yeah. Uh, it, it's interesting, too, because it's like, you know, around this this time of uh, like art, like everybody's writing, and like sometimes it's hard to see like who's using metaphor, and who's like being fucking serious. But then also who's using metaphor and being serious. Mm-hmm. You know, like in a way, this writing is like kind of like wildly alchemical because it's like they wrote that they were going to do something, and that made it like it made it. You know what I'm saying? And that's some that's some real like magical shit. They went with it, you know? Like you said, they walked the walk, you know? Yeah. Marinet didn't play games. Plus he had real deep pockets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was like born to uh, a family of like lawyers, right? Lawyers and businessmen or something. He had a Sudanese nurse, man. <laughs> yeah. Um and it's interesting because I think because war plays war is features as like a central element in futurism, right? I mean, yeah. like in terms of the context of when this was written, because it, it was, uh, I think I read somewhere you could probably speak to it more, but like Marinetti um, predicted or prophesized like World War One, and then and then when it happened. Like they, they were like, fuck yeah. Yeah. Um, no, he put like, that was the thing that he wrote for right. pushing people to go. Right. He's like, let's do this fam. Like, come on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they, and they, they have a, I'd say interesting relationship to war. So, I mean, he, the, the second, <laughs> the, se- <laughs> the second essay is, is called the war is the only hygiene of the world. Yes. All right. So what is he talking about? Okay. <laughs> Like, if we want to talk about it on, like, an esoteric type level or, like, you know, metaphor or whatever, Mm -hmm. right? Like, war, in a sense, is a total fucking excess. Like, it it levels. You know what I'm saying? Like, think of battle, level. All you have left is rubble, right? Rubble, ruins. A bare fucking prime, like... Just, just raw material is what's left, and then from that you get to build. You know, there's, there's a, there's a thing going on here where it's like, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's metaphorical, but it, it's, it's also like, like, it's serious too. You know, like, in the sense, like, we can look at like war. Yes, they, they did go, but like, also they have claimed the war on history. You know. 
And in mm-hmm. that sense, they broke that shit down and rebuilt it back up with their work, right? Like, they, they washed the land with a war, right? Like, if you think of the, the sense of, like, the, the, uh, the, the, the holy war of the self, right? Like, you're going against, you're getting rid of the things from yourself that need to go, that have been identified and need to go. So it's this cleansing. So in that sense, it's the hygiene, right? Like, we, when, like, when we need to, even, I guess, if, if we think of cleaning ourselves, we're fucking destroying things, right? Like, we have this thing of, of destruction, this, this, this burn it down to build it new, or destroy it to build it new, you know, to build new over what was there, you know, this, this complete cleansing. Like, when he talks about anarchists and he says that they, they go for, like, the fruit, on the trees and he's like no let's lift up the fucking roots and destroy it you know like he it's it's a complete leveling get it all the way out not just not just battle not just bickering not just this is that total total absolute you yeah. know yeah it's like it's aesthetic and it's in its art and it's and he's fucking serious <laughs> yeah <It's> super sketchy <laughs> <laughs> uh whenever i hear the word cleansing i'm, I'm just like oh um, I'm, I'm gonna go over here <laughs> no, but I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I will say, I, I think it's a, it's interesting conceptually, you know, mm-hmm. because I, I think that figures in like different spiritual religious traditions, you know, like creation through destruction. Yeah. And I think, like you said, you sort of drew like a biological metaphor too, you mm-hmm. know, like how that works in our bodies, um, and like landscapes as well, you know, like, Absolutely. like, like there are like agricultural techniques that are based on setting fire to lands. Interesting. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, there there mm-hmm. are actually um there there are certain types of trees that they're not able to proliferate or reproduce unless they they're like set ablaze. That's crazy. Yeah, I, I there's a specific word for it. I don't remember it, but yeah, I remember it, it was really interesting. Um but yeah, so lots of metaphors <laughs> to be had. Um and see like uh yeah. What does he say? Uh oh. Yeah, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, no. So I, I was going to say, too, like, I mean, even in the the articles that he's listing, mm-hmm. I mean, I think in Article 7, it says, you know, there is no beauty that does not consist of struggle, no work that lacks an aggressive character can be considered a masterpiece poetry must be conceived as a violent assault launched against unknown forces to reduce them to submission under man I god think, damn yeah but, but, but I, I think that does figure in into what we were talking at least this is what i took yeah. this article to be gesturing towards in terms of like the relationship to war is how how he understood the the role of war in sort of advancing human human culture or like human artifice is that i mean i think war would be the <laughs> the epitome of, of like struggle and destruction like if there if there was one absolutely and it's like it's a it's a total force you know like it's it's a total force realized against one thing you know so it's like consider this like where they're talking about poetry right and like it needs to be like this violent mm. total assault like the poetry that they're against is the shit of the romantics you know and like all this lofty uh like lovey bullshit you know because like their push against that whole romanticism thing is seeing that it just went into fucking everybody's love of material like love in in the truest sense they they saw it as like it was degenerated because it just went into like oh this is what you do you buy you know you you buy stuff is this is that it's not a true thing it's not truly there you know like they know that the they'll be destroyed with love, you know. Like for for the younger futures, they're going to destroy them with a love. So maybe love is its force, its, it's true passion. That 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 line also kind of has the uh, understanding that line and and their I wouldn't even say dismissal because that's fucking weak. Like they're the complete fucking hatred against like romanticism. And what it does Mm -hmm. in this whole, like, oh, like, fucking, like, just complete, like, like, weird, like, love of, like, nostalgia in the past and this and that and lofting and and Mm -hmm. memories, you know, this never moving forward. It is a weird stagnation. It's a regression. That touches on uh, their uh, disinterest in women. 
because that like it's not woman exactly it's the woman of that time yeah and that they felt that it was just all about romanticism and material and and you know mm-hmm. like Eddie, Eddie fucking Murphy would say like what have you done for me lately <laughs> <laughs> So before we go to the topic uh, of, of gender, because I feel like that's going to be the most like the most incendiary subject. Um, so like romanticism as I guess a literature movement of literature art, I think like for, from my understanding, which is like a lays person understanding is like I know that nostalgia and looking towards the past configures in it like really centrally mm-hmm. and sort of like transcendence, right? Like transcendence from like, worldly affairs or or landscapes but like what in in sort of like the art history understanding like what exactly it is it is the romanticist movement because when i think of it i don't touch romanticism at all too okay for for like it's like as much as i like like sugar maybe it's too much and and it's, (laughs) it's like i i feel like I think the word hope is 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 weak and doesn't do anything, but in a sense, it's hopeless, you know. And I could also see looking at it from a futurist point, where it's like there is no escape, and there's no accepting of reality, and there's no there's no movement because like it needs for things to be what they are, you know. Even in like uh, the sense of like how we get our like uh how our like modern day like like really like view on relationships is definitely like (laughs) fucked up by the romantics you know and like there has to be this like initial thing and this 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 intuitive spark and and all of this like you know like like you don't have to work for it you just it just has to feel all the time you know right like it's fucking Like, like an encounter yeah it's not fucking real you know like maybe like there is that aspect of it but it's it takes away from the fact that you actually do need to work and do things. Mm-hmm. So if we actually look at this too, it's not that he's saying like the other stuff. Like he's not just saying like everything has to be violent all the time. We can look at it as like what Batai was saying, where it's like you know, the man that like denies parts of himself or parts of his human nature is not complete. You know, so like mm-hmm. to deny these aspects because we know these are human aspects. You know, like it makes us it makes us incomplete to deny them. So maybe, you know, their force of bringing it in so hard with such a fucking ruthless uh, of violence, (laughs) you know, like it's, that's the method of speeding it up because remember, we know that they're behind. Mm -hmm. So maybe they're, they're seeing that's like the world is behind, you know, like, like that, the it's, it's, um, it's immediate because they know that the world needs it. The world Mm -hmm. needs the hygiene because it's, it's 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 sick from the one thing it's incomplete right like becoming modern we've let go of a certain thing we've let go of like we we've we've stopped ourselves from being the complete human so their hard push speeds it back into existence they're not doing it slow remember right it's immediate Mm -hmm. it's so so that hard push brings it in right there it's like if a band opens up a set with a fucking breakdown they didn't waste (laughs) any time you know what i mean yeah like or like just the fact like think of hardcore like so many bands don't even have transitions you just go from part to part right like, cause you know, you need it right there. You don't want to fucking wait. You need it. You know, right? like the world needs it. <laughs> so like they're bringing in, they're bringing in that shit real hard and fast. So like the world needs its cleansing or, you know, like. <laughs> I, I, sh- I shuddered when I heard that. <laughs> I understand it in this context, what it meant. but <laughs> No, but yeah, I mean, there's, there's like a fervor. Yeah. Right. And mm-hmm. I mean, you can you can feel it in his writing. Absolutely. Right. There, there's like a mania. And and I mean, that was even reflected in like, like you said, this wasn't like just them posturing. Right. Like just trying to like look radical mm-hmm. and, and like posture is radical. Like I, it, it was even reflected in how they live their lives. Like I was reading how the futurists, you know, they're like at the precipice of these new technological developments, right? So yeah, like, Marinetti had access to it all. He was one of the first people apparently to be in like an airplane and shit. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. that's cool. No, but yeah, so like, you know, that and then the printing press. And so like they, they were like mass producing their like manifestos, right? Mm-hmm. Like, and like poetry and literature 
and just disseminating it everywhere. Um, and I'm sure, like, I mean, what, what was, I mean, t- what I was wondering, I guess, like from a historical standpoint was like for the average person in Italy, mm-hmm. like what did this all look like to, <laughs> to them? Probably fucking like, crazy. No, but I like mean, it, it, this wasn't some fringe thing, right? I mean, maybe it started out like that. I but, mean, they started a lot of conflict. Like there, there yeah. are things like there would be riots, you know? Yeah. Like there was riots and they were involved in everything. There was fights and shit. They were pissing people off everywhere Mm -hmm. you know not even just in italy all over the fucking place yeah so i guess like normal people probably like what the fuck you know but then like younger people like yeah let's do this shit you know (laughs) for the ones that were about it you know um yeah that is interesting to think about like i it's like how how was he received like imagine like when this first came out like people reading it you know Mm mm-hmm and it's like, what the fuck do you mean, like, burn down the museum? Yeah. I mean, I, I'd imagine, I mean, obviously, futurism became super influential, so we kind of mm-hmm. know how the story went. But I imagine for, like, his intended his intended audience, who, like, I, I assumed would be sort of, like, the urban masses, who are, okay. like, waiting, you know, they're kind of, like, very disoriented and ununified and waiting for like a strong, you know, so quote unquote strong national leader yeah, to yeah. sort of, you know, grab the horns of Italy and drive it into world power. I mean, th- this seemed to be like the the spark for like, you know, the tinderbox of Italy. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he also talks like, he mentions like those, like the people that like don't get it are going to like, or are, are against it or whatever, like it's not for them. Right. You know? Yeah, no, I mean, he, he says it. I, I I need to read this because it was just so... <laughs> <laughs> At the end where he's like, you raise objections. Stop, stop. We know them. We've understood. The refined and mendacious mind tells us that we are the summation and continuation of our ancestors. Maybe, suppose it's so, but what difference does it make? We don't want to listen. <laughs> Woe to anyone who repeats those infamous words to us. <laughs> <laughs> that was basically just like, 1910s version of don't at me bro (laughs) basically (laughs) lift up your heads standing erect on the summit of the world yet once more we fling our challenge to the stars these niggas are reaching beyond (laughs) they understood they were going to space already yeah they're going to space yeah elon musk wishes he was this (laughs) (laughs) i'd be really interested in like listening to an analysis if there is one between like Future, Italian futurism and the sort of continuation into today with like the futurism of Elon Musk you know when I think of when I see like futurism things now um, or anything that says it's futurism like I always look and I'm like okay so where's like the language of destruction mm-hmm. and if it's not there then like I'll be snobby and be like it's not futurism mm-hmm. you know but like yeah is it there no, I, I th- I think to some extent I don't think it is as um targeted okay um a- as as Marinetti puts it I think it's it's sort of it's veiled behind a different kind of language um but it it's definitely not like a political a fleshed out political critique like how the futurists are because this is obviously like super like coherent cogent and like well thought out whole mm-hmm. like intellectual tradition that they're trafficking in but i i think the whole like language around um like free markets technology and innovation is is sort of like disavowal of tradition by another name i Be, see okay. you know because anything it's very hard to argue against like the logic of the market or technological innovation you know it's like if something stands in the way of that, then, you know, it's archaic or it's obsolete or it's just a necessary evil to just get rid of those things because you can't, you can't argue with sort of the thrust of, of history. You no, know? that's really interesting that you say that because when he talks about like they're in the car and they're racing down the streets mm-hmm. and like he, he does a couple of things here, right? Like, so he, he likens the technology to animals, right? And then he also, the car is 
is like the new dog, right? Mm-hmm. And he like he he touches it on that at the same time, but he talks about when it's racing down the street, he runs over dogs. <laughs> Right, like yeah, he runs over dogs and he runs over. He sees cyclists in the middle of the street and they're in his fucking way. Mm-hmm. And he's like, like, he's he says they're they're a bore. Like they were on they're running on old conversation and old logic and old reasoning and it's fucking stupid, right? And you just need to run it down. He crashes, but like just so to think about that, right? Like this 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 car, it's the it's the new dog, it's the updated dog, right? In a sense, but not necessarily. It's likened to it in the fact that, that that it's primal. It's this animal thing because it's 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 at its base level, right? But um, so you got it got rid of the the the, the old the, the the original animal, right? Mm-hmm. It's gone. He sees the cyclists. The cyclists were that technology before the cars, and he's on the fucking path to get rid of that motherfucker too, right? It's fucking crazy, <laughs> dude. It's crazy. Yeah. And, and then he crashes. But yeah. then it's also really wild. Like then this is the the main thing with poetry right because like his car is a beast his car is, at that time is a dog it crashes it goes into the into the the um the ditch which he's like it's a mud but he talks about like he he mentions it as like it's this like maternal mud right like almost like the, this pit he becomes and then he has like a vision of like his Sudanese nurse so he has this idea of like mother love uh, oh the, the mud is it, the the mud felt to him like the breasts of the Sudan like the yeah I, I, I remember right? reading that yeah <laughs> yeah like and and but like think of like that's this nurturing like he, he's he the car which he has become one with and prior in this he speaks of actually becoming one with the car you mm-hmm. know like they they lacerate each other um, in a very interesting way, but it goes into this thing, and it's like, in a sense, reborn. It's reborn as a fucking shark. Mm-hmm. If you know, like, that's pretty crazy, right? Like, first it was a dog, in a sense. Then it was a shark. It was reborn. So there's this constant thing of like, change it. Ne- like how it needs to change, it will change in that moment. It reacted to the hook, which was the fishing hook, pulling it out of the water, and became the fish which it needed to be at that moment. And then where the car was broken and no one said that it would be be able to revive, he touched it again and the car was revived, right? It's fucking wild. I love this dude. Like, it's, it's like, it's so crazy to see what he's doing with like, uh, that type of poetry. There's a, there's another writing that he talks about and like kind of explaining what to do like with this poetry a little bit. And it's like this pure free association. But that pure and free association is what creates like it lets you kind of get around an experience that completely is new because he's working with completely new experiences. But we don't have the exact language to explain that. So you're working with abstraction to get around it, you know, like so. But it lets you it lets you create something new but by taking these these two different things and combining them together which mm-hmm. in a sense reflects what he did with the car in the beginning we notice that um you know like he touches he he touches his breast right and he's like oh it's all warm and shit and then he gets inside of the car so at that point he's he's inside of the car right so mm-hmm. the car need, he needs the car to go but the car needs him to go also and then he oh, says yeah, that his yeah. stomach is like it he his stomach is like um like he gets lacerated like by the car's steering wheel so the thing that he needs to use like direction to move the car is also directed into him like it's he's become one with the steering wheel because now they're unified right it's crazy too and he also says that when he steps into the car it's like he's stepping in and laying down in the corpse of a coffin but this revives him as something else you know like he's 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 dead as what he was before and he's revived as something new when he and the car become one for the use of what it needs to do which is going forward and this is when he also talks about the fact that he mentions that time and space is fucking dead because now we have velocity and which is crazy because like if you literally think about like traveling in cars that changes ex- like that destroys how we conceive of time and travel and space and like how long it takes to go somewhere how and and, and what it's like space wise to go somewhere how long like how far things are like it's fucking incredible what's going on in this and like the level of poetry that he is touching but also what he's doing in there and like that that embeddedness is in there so like even we can see what would that do on like an unconscious level you know for inspiring people that would read this you know yeah it 
it's it's super interesting like the so the element of motion and movement Mm -hmm. i mean you see it throughout in the manifesto the language that he uses i mean you could see it in the actual art pieces which is really edifying for me for, for me to see um you know like the the one i remember is the one of the dog you know what i'm talking about where it's like it it's depicted as they're like gradations okay, of its yeah, legs, yeah, yeah. so it's mm-hmm. moving. I forget the name of it, but um, so you can see how that like configures prominently into the actual art, but it's also like they're turning it, they're turning movement into this like political philosophy of life, right? Like how to organize a society, like what like what the human condition ought to be like, like yeah. the potential of a human life. It's really interesting, and it also. It seems to me like almost like a precursor to transhumanism. Absolutely, that's right? I think that's where I was kind of getting at with him, like the needing of the of the car. And yeah, shit, no, because like, as yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, 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 that's exactly it. That's what I was getting to. Yeah, no, because as you were talking, I was like, "Huh, this sounds really familiar." <laughs> 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 no, and I mean, it. it see, I, I wonder if um if that's something that's fleshed out by sort of I guess scholars of transhumanism, whether it like inherits ideas from uh italian futurism because i do i see a lot of interesting parallels uh especially like with machines i mean Mm -hmm. it's it's ted kaczynski's nightmare (laughs) 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 no but i mean immediately i thought like you know the cyborg manifesto even though it's like there are obvious differences but like sort of that integration of machine and man which seems to be so central to italian futurism and like its aesthetics it's pretty interesting because it's like it's it's necessary you know like for the one thing to propel and for the other thing to survive it's necessary for them to get together which is really 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 interesting that's cool yeah for sure um so i think we're gonna get to the can of worms now (laughs) the the two elephants in the room okay let's let's go through the uh what what they wanted Okay, yeah. And, and let, we'll, let, we'll make sure. our way there. We'll, we'll do that first. Fucking can in the rooms. Okay, so the the manifesto of futurism. They are uh, they're they're saying what they want, right? So number one, we intend to sing the love of danger, the habit of energy and fearlessness. Mm-hmm. I think it's pretty straightforward, right? Yeah. yeah. Love of danger. I mean, they they definitely embodied that in their lives autobiographically <laughs> they're <laughs> fucking maniacs <laughs> courage boldness and rebelliousness will be the essential elements of our poetry up till now literature has exalted contemplative stillness ecstasy and sleep i love his usage of language right like how right. the contrast the juxtaposition where like where he describes futurism and it's just like this fervor and vigor and then when he describes like sort of like roman classical like art it's just like this like still stagnant like I, sort of i think that's where the language is violent so violent in the sense of like it is fucking active and it gets right into you in right the exact way that it needs to you know yeah let's see uh oh do, do we finish it uh up until now literature has exalted contemplative stillness ecstasy and sleep it's interesting because he this this starts off where they're all sleep deprived mm-hmm. you know so there's actually something else going on there with the sleep de- depriving like this 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 urge of like this urging from madness to get outside of the self yeah you know another thing of movement we intend to exalt move movement <laughs> and aggression feverish insomnia the racer's stride the mortal leap the slap and the punch <laughs> so and then on number four he says we affirm that the beauty of the world has been enriched by a new form of beauty the beauty of speed a racing car with a hood that glistens with large pipes resembling a serpent with explosive breath a roaring automobile that seems to ride on grape shot that is more beautiful than the victory of Samothras. I guess it was a battle. Oh, okay. Somewhere. Yeah, he's a prolific writer. Um, number five. Yeah. We intend to him man at the steering wheel. I guess he did it to himself. <laughs> <laughs> the ideal axis at which intersects the earth itself hurled ahead in its own race along the path of its orbit. There's something interesting there, too, because, like, I guess if you think of the steering wheel, right, and going left and right, so it's this, it's left and right, and then it's, like, forward and back to keep it straight. There's there's a weird thing about the cross there, you know? And then there's also, in the in the beginning uh, of this whole writing, there's 
this this desire of light and this light coming from within something and 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 the light being that fire in the forest it's really on genesis he's he, he he knows what he he's amazing right like he knows what he's doing for dude, sure without a doubt uh yeah uh six uh henceforth Poets must do their utmost with adore, splendor, and generosity to increase the enthusiastic fervor of primordial elements. Like they were, they were super into like you know what everybody else was getting into, like just primitivism shit. You know what I mean? But like going to that that core original thing, I guess almost in a sense, uh, in a sense, kind of like retracing what is lost, kind of ish. But also just like going to the bare basics and and. And then going forward, but even if like we think of it's like okay, like they're like actually, they were into like savage, like they they he he wrote a book and it's it's like it's like about the savage, right? But like in in his writing, he creates this this whole thing. It's called the Untamables. It's really interesting to read. Actually, you may like it. Um, oh, okay. So say like even if you have like the idea of where they're coming from, or just like, um the reason like institutions right you destroy that and then you go forward or even in the sense of new technologies right the car comes out that car is at its beginning you know so in that sense it's in it it's in its primitive state you know and the roads are too so it it's like sometimes you think of futures is like you, you go back to go forward but if they're working with the new the new is that 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 zero point from which you can go forward you know it's very interesting yeah for sure um but then like yeah i guess like primordial elements like that's that's what they're saying like violence savagery you know what i mean like yeah. force is fucking the slap and the punch <laughs> yeah and i think that that's like the precursor that to that's a good segue to the next one which is there's no beauty that does not consist of struggle no work that lacks an aggressive character can be considered a masterpiece. Poetry must be conceived as a violent assault launched against unknown forces to reduce them to submission under man. I thought this one was interesting. Um, I mean, we already kind of touched upon it briefly, but I thought it was also interesting from a historical perspective. I don't know if there are any parallels other than the fact that these were happening at the same time. Um, but it's interesting because what was going on in Britain mm -hmm. at the time, like at the turn of the 20th century was this hysteria around this idea of over civilization, okay. right? That like people, you know, people were living in the wake of like the cultural influence of Darwinism, you know, and not, not very like with not much integrity to the actual theory, but sort of like, this bastardized um, conceptualization of social Darwinism, right? So that was like super influential. And, and then people are being incorporated and integrated into like the cities, right? These like urban centers in the metropolis of Britain. And, you know, there, there's like the Boer War, mass unemployment, all these things happening. And this idea begins to emerge like particularly among like a certain class of scientists that, you know, civilization is interfering in sort of the Darwinian process for fitness, right? That like civil, okay. you know, it's very similar to like arguments you hear nowadays about like the welfare state, mm -hmm. you know, um, with obviously like some significant differences, but you know, that, that's where, that that's where, you know, that, the class of those like hunters the big game hunters you know they really emerge as these like imperial heroes because you know there are these guys who are coming from the cities and you know they're going out into you know the frontiers of like of africa and um, you know america like into the wild and roughing it and they're able to like reinvigorate their virility right and like sort of stave off the impacts of over civilization and like cities and, and all of these things. Right. Because there's, there's an element to it. That's like in or humans need str a, a level of struggle 
and like destruction and like a survival instinct in order to develop. Absolutely. And so, yeah. The, yeah. And so there was that. And then this hysteria over degenerationism, like people were degenerating and over civil, so being over civilized. That was a long winded way <laughs> of just saying, um, I wonder if there's like a connection other, other than the fact that like they were just happening at some time period. That, that, that right? suspicion of civilization. Yeah. Everywhere at this time, everywhere. Yeah. It's like in the underpinnings of fucking everyone's writing. Yeah. Yeah, without a doubt. That is a complete connection, I would say. Mm -hmm. Number eight. We stand on the last... Uh, What the fuck is that word? Promontory? Promontory. Okay, you read this one. <laughs> we stand on the last promontory of the centuries. Why should we look back over our shoulders when we intend to breach the mysterious doors of the impossible? Time and space died yesterday. Uh, Oof. Right? We already live in the absolute, for we have already created velocity, which is eternal and omnipresent. Motherfuck, man. Yeah. He's a great writer. <laughs> yes. I'll, I'll give him that. <laughs> Time and space died yesterday. And then, then, like, this desire of the mysterious, but to go into the mysterious, which is that, that unknown, that nothingness, it draws you out of yourself. You're drawn by that nothingness, that unknown. So th where, like, they mentioned, like, the, it's 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 that madness which, does, like, pushes you to become outside of yourself. Mm -hmm. Like, going into, like, some work I'm, like, research I'm doing on Bataille right now, and it's, like, that that's that's crucial you know what i mean this for some reason we we desire this 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 like losing of ourselves or like this going outside of ourselves but that going outside of ourselves affirms that we exist you know like like the the laceration of the 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 <laughs> hmm, how do you put it like the other person affirms that the individual exists you know so i think it has something to do with that yeah I think this next one is even more like incendiary. We intend to glorify war, <laughs> the only hygiene of the world, militarism, patriotism, the destructive gesture of anarchists, <laughs> beautiful ideas worth dying for, and contempt for women. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> um, do Do you want to read the other two, or because I think that's a perfect segue to sort of what, like going into the other two. Um. Yeah, 10, 10 and 11. I mean, 10 is just, you know, he's saying destroy me. Whoa. Oh, 10 is interesting. Hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. We, we intend to destroy museums, libraries, academies of every sort, and to fight against moralism, feminism, and every utilitarian or opportunistic cowardice. Ooh. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Without a doubt. I mean, like, so if if we look at this in, in the next, you know, the other reading that he did in uh, 1911, War the Only Hygiene of the World, like, he talks about is, like, a they they look at those things as uh, creating like like looking for peace, which he sees as stagnation. Mm -hmm. You know, like in, in this in this sense, like opposition or friction is what gets you to keep going. You know, like even if it's like I don't know, fucking somebody makes you jealous over something. You know, like that makes that inspires you to do something. Mm -hmm. That inspires you to go and get that thing or to get something better than it. Where uh, like when he hits on he hits on a lot of things for like trying to create this 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 like level of peace or sameness mm -hmm. that he said it's the death of a people I mean like it's it's the death of humanity to him it, it stops you from moving forward when it's all on the same thing and when it you know um, there I, d I did actually want to pull this up um, Okay, so he's talking again, like uh, the we intend to destroy museums, libraries, uh, academies of every sort um, to fight against moralism, feminism, and every utilitarian opportunistic cowardice. And this is like the point where anyone that I ever like see encounters futurism, <laughs> it's like a <laughs> what? <laughs> and it's like okay, and then then I'm like, all right, let's let's try to explain and and talk a little bit about this. Like, it's like. It's it's uh, it's definitely the 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 point at at uh future uh feminism that usually touches people right, mm -hmm. and uh I think we like the first thing is understanding like how like what was going on in those movements at different times and then understanding like their reaction to it. So when we mentioned earlier that like their disdain of like romanticism and like this desire of like like 
material love as opposed to like maybe something of a true love you know um that's definitely there and it's also their view of feminism as creating a sameness or like in their view it's like it's kind of making things unbalanced by making like making women the same as men in their view so there was act, there was futurist women and they wrote yeah. their own manifestos right and i think one of the most one, one that actually responds directly to that line and that was by um uh valentine de saint point right okay so she writes this in 1912 and her response uh to that exact line like she she opens it up with um a quote and this is a response to Marnetti. Humanity is mediocre. <laughs> the majority of women are neither superior nor inferior to the majority of women of of men. They are equal. Both merit the same disdain. <laughs> the ma- I, I don't know why that, that made me think of. Uh, I'm sure you've heard this before. Um, it's like that. That that reminded me of. Um, in a very shorthanded way of uh there's this like prominent vegan activist i'm not going to go into too much detail but he had a video um where he, he was like uh grappling with accusations of racism okay and he he was just like i'm not racist i hate all races equally <laughs> <laughs> it's like okay <laughs> Uh, I, I but yeah, so yeah, yeah utter contempt. Yeah, <laughs> I get like, it. <laughs> the mass of humanity was never anything other than the cultivated field from which the genesis of heroes, the, of from which the geniuses and heroes of both sexes have sprung. But humanity, as in nature, there are certain moments that are more uh, uh, propitious to their flourishing. In the summer of humanity, when the earth is warmed by the sun, geniuses and heroes are um, abound. Uh, we are standing on the verge of springtime. We need an outpour of sunlight, which is to say an outpouring of blood. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, what's what, uh, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, uh, she says, it's absurd to divide humanity into women and men. It's composed only of feminine, uh, femininity and masculinity. So she's on a she's on another level, and she's just like, you know, they go on to talk about this, and then the other uh, women of futurism, their manifestos. It's like she she's on some shit. Like we need to make like she's like the only reason that society exists is because of women because they make everyone, and she's like we need to start making soldiers right now. For war, mm-hmm. that's what she was on. You know what I mean? And yeah. like this hard fucking put. Like she's crazier than Marinetti in this, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> you know what I mean? He's he's like he's on some 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 poetry shit, and she's like, we need blood. <laughs> so so, quick question. So mm-hmm. like, I can see the sort of on the one hand, there's the political inheritance of futurism, which I think we kind of spoke about briefly, but like the the risorgimento, like. 19th century thrust for unification across Italy, I would say, and like sort of the desire for national identity and uh, yeah, that, that, that sort of the thrust of that, I would say that's like the political inheritance, but there's also a lot of like spiritual and religious elements. Absolutely. To it. That is, it, that is baked in there. Cause she, yeah. she goes on to say, it's like, she says that uh, society, like everyone is the world is too, um, is too feminine at that time. And yeah. they, they, she, like she says, the world needs a virility and an aggression. Yeah. Even brutality. There's that word virility. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is, do they, I mean, is it ever stated by like the, so the, the intellectuals themselves or like contemporary scholars who study this stuff, like what the religious, but um, their influences. Yeah. Uh, most people keep, they, they don't touch it. Like okay. most people kind of hide it a lot of their influences with these things, which is interesting. But like you could see, you can see it pull through, yeah. Um, through some of the things that they write and then like maybe where they live, you know, yeah. like their past things that they were involved with. You can understand. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 
it's funny. I feel like when, when, when we touch upon these like really incendiary and uh, like controversial <laughs> points mm-hmm. um, to like sort of expand on them to be like, well, this is what they really meant. So like you're reading the point and it's like, okay, okay. And then it's like, uh, <laughs> on the last point. And then like, so you explained it like yeah. by, by sort of like elaborating the writings of this woman. And it was the same thing. It was like, okay, I see where you're going. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> like the the last line about blood, it's crazy, uh, right? Holy shit! Yeah, she she's like, okay, look, she's like, no more women who come with uh, arms full of flowers to cling to their soul, like the like the knees of soldiers and shit. Yeah. She's she's she doesn't want anything that's like like a passive type thing. Like she's like, she's oh, a f- militarist. I, I, w- so, I would say, yeah, right? yeah. It kind of yeah. it it gives it definitely gives that like yeah. This is like. She's like the overbearing mother makes like makes like anemic children and anemic men. Yeah, like I definitely see it's more pronounced to me like the the influences with like the degenerationism mm. and uh yeah and the, and the militarism of the age. So yeah, it, it's interesting. So I I see the the sort of nuance with the disavowal of romanticism and like that make that sort of allowing us to make sense of what they're saying in terms of gender. Mm-hmm. So I guess like what people are looking at, it's, it's not exactly gender that they're talking about. It's, it's, it's a feminine and masculine. Right. Energy wise. It's not necessarily gender. Right. You know, did he, cause I know, I know with Marinetti, he, even though he writes pretty disparagingly here about feminism, mm-hmm. he came to support later on feminism, right. Or like women's suffrage but but not for not for not not for like you know the sort of intuitive reasons for the that you would assume it, it was it was because somehow in his ideological framework it made sense to him at a later point to support i mean he so, wrote it into the fascist manifesto okay interesting yeah like that that pushes uh suffrage and like you know like women's voting is right there yeah and 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 equal yeah like, and shit like that so like again it's not it's not necessarily a thing against women it's the energy and force of that time and like the the over the over mother you know what i mean where it's like nothing can grow almost like the society where they're not letting it grow mm-hmm. because it's too it's too clung you know it's mm-hmm. it's too holding right like even like valentine she goes into that as well you know it's like this like let the motherfucker go like they want to build something strong and maybe the over coddling is the thing that's like holding it back in that sense but of course like she explains that forcefully he's not going to explain that as a poet you know what i mean like because then that's going to take that's going to take the edge out of it you know like that's going to you know that's going to 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 do it in this radical language that he uses is going to make you listen and make you get engaged you know make you want to know what he's saying make you read more and then that gets you in yeah yeah so that's a good transition point into the I, I think the second elephant in the room that I mentioned before. Okay, which hit is, it up. Yeah, no, which, which is you know futurism's, um, you know alleged, not not alleged. <laughs> oh. there, there's a oh. there's oh. a clear relationship. Oh, we're going there. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the the futurism's relationship with fascism because because yeah. you know li- like we were saying before we started recording. I think to the lays person, insofar as lay people even know what the fuck futurism is, <laughs> um, I guess the, to people who, who take a very cursory view of futurism, I would include myself in that. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like the impression that you get is that okay, futurism is sort of the like aesthetic or literary precursor to fascism, and and they're sort of like very heavily aligned. I think well, you with know, the force and fashion and the in the like and the uniting of a people. Yeah. And so, you know, when I was reading a little bit more, I saw that, you know, like the scholarly consensus seemed to be that while there is a connection, the relationship between futurism and fascism is really complicated and, and nuanced. So because at the core of it, futurism would fascism's attachment to like that past and especially the Roman thing knocks it right out of like what like what it became with that, that over like desire and linkage of it is what is where futurism makes its exit. Yeah. Yeah. So like talk about that a little more. Cause it's, it's like, 
you know, to people, and again, I'm cool myself in that who don't know much about this topic, you know, obviously there are clear linkages, but like, you know, what, what, what are, what are, what are those nuances that like people need to know? Cause obviously like Marinetti, he, he co-wrote the fascist manifesto. Yeah. Right. So th- th- like, he's a, he, sorry, what? Yeah. Yeah. So like there's the fascist manifesto, but then like, you know, a lot of people, you know, signed it. Even the other dude that co-wrote it, he became anti-fascist, you know? Right. Yeah. And, so and like, yeah, so he he was part of this, at least like the emergence of fascism prior to, because I know you said he sort of disavowed or disengaged from fascism once Mussolini came to power. So I think that's so, like a, the ground level establishing of a party thing, you know, and then right. once things started to become a reality, yeah. you know, it's like, oh, I guess I don't really get down with that, yeah. you know? Yeah, so just like in like, you know, su- like super quick like sentence or two if you could if you could even do that like what what what, like what do people need like what would i need to know you know it's like this guy my first impression is like okay you know there there are clear linkages to fascism but like what's like the scholarly nuance like you know what futurism can never be fascism because fascism glorification of the past Mm -hmm. and probably even just the establishing of order you Mm -hmm. know what i mean and a fucking sameness yeah that's that's that that's everything out of futurism right there you know like it, a lot of the things i think it's is people see like the influence of like the violence and like the takeover you know but like marinetti was really on some other shit like he he, he was about like a, a pure like internationalism and he was like yo let's bring it all together he was like let's bring it all together with italy on top though <laughs> running the show but he he was about like let's let's do this you know what i mean like let's let's go and unite but i would say like that that need to to move forward is really like and and be disconnected from like the past and all of like this old shit and even like like think about it when he's re- when he's talking about like like anarchists and shit he says like the one thing at an anarchist meeting is like his view of it is that they're going to elect the oldest and most seasoned person to um to to lead everyone and then he's like you don't think that motherfucker who has experience is going to take over and just establish his own power and then use it for the whole thing so as soon as like he you know, like he's is is power crazy and, and as wild as he was, he definitely has like a problem with other people's power. You know, like mm-hmm. there there is that desire because he was definitely about like a unified like Italy, but for the young, you know, for the youth. Because he also mentioned like instead of getting the oldest person in the room, get the youngest person, and that's who you fucking listen to, and that's who that's who moderates everything, right? Yeah. So he he is about like this this freshness this renewal not something established yeah i think i re- i remember um again like my super cursory yeah, yeah like review of the historical context i mean there was like you said like a falling out between mussolini and the futurists and like mussolini and you know the fascist party their the, the ethos of like their operations was i mean I, there's a specific phrase um, but you know, something it was something alike to um return to order or something like that. And I feel like that runs pretty antithetical to like the spirit of futurism. Yeah, I mean like even like just that word return to. Right. You know? Like that's the you feel more like, the fuck are you returning to? You know what I mean? We got rid of that shit before and nigga, we burned it down. What's good? You know? <laughs> like <laughs> Yeah. I thought this hygiene was supposed to <laughs> <laughs> this is what firestorm was about <laughs> street by street a firestorm to purify this is, this is what carl was writing about <laughs> <laughs> it was he was influenced by marinetti yeah um but yeah this was super gratifying to read um mm-hmm. just like as a historical document because i mean especially like you know i i didn't know much about futurism you know yeah. but it's it's anything but a fringe movement like it's been so it's configured so prominently in, into like just historical like uh 
influence and like politics and culture and it was just interesting to see this as like a historical artifact yeah. you know i mean not even artifact it's, it's still i mean this language is still with us today i don't think it's ever left i mean i don't know if mar if this started if you could say you know that its origins like lie with the futurists or he just kind of like articulated these energies that were already you know um there but i know like looking at avant-garde art i i didn't no one was talking with the violence that he was. Yeah. You know, that I saw, you know, Borges were on some other shit, but they they were like, they were like witty in English, you know? Yeah. I mean, so what do you, what do you think about <laughs> the, cause I, it, it's really, it, it's really interesting. I mean, obviously he's a really prolific writer, mm-hmm. but then some, some of the ideas, I mean, putting aside the like, you know, <laughs> the, the, the really like, um, controversial topics of like you know gender and the relationship to fascism um you know the ideas of how to organize a society you know what features of human life are um admirable what we should discard i mean i definitely found myself disagreeing with a lot of like like i don't know a lot of a lot of what you disagree with like aside from like the like the, the 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 parts that you mentioned yeah um I mean, the, I would say the glorification of, you know, accelerating rates of change, you know, the destruction of history and tradition, even what you said before, like about championing, you know, the young or the youthful as sort of the avant, or sort of the vanguard Mm -hmm. of, of society. I mean... I don't know. To, I guess to me, that strikes me as <laughs> like, like, I mean, the culture we have today, which is very bereft of elderhood, you know, and, and sort of, uh, I mean, there is this sort of gesturing towards, you know, like the youth or children, not, yeah. not children, but like, you know, the youth college age students who are sort of the least corrupted by like, I mean, depending on where where you fall in the political spectrum, but the least corrupted by capitalism, the least corrupted by like, you know, the liberalism of the university, and so you know we should look to them as sort of like, you know, the 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 pushers of radicalism. But I guess to and I, to me that kind of strikes me as like, you know, a culture that's very much lost its way and doesn't know how to produce. So I don't think he was actually looking that that young because remember, like uh-huh. they're like they're like thirty. Yeah. When they're doing this, you know what I mean? So like and they said they considered themselves the youth, youthful. Yeah. And the youth at 30, you know? So I don't think they're looking like But but super. I mean e- even that, like I feel like our society is very much structured around um, you know, the the the, the class of like, you know, 30 somethings, 40 somethings, you know, like people who are like in their prime of, mm-hmm. of their careers i say you know those are the people who you know rule rule the world in some respects or like move move the needle i mean some it's sometimes you know in, in a lot of cases older people but um yeah i don't know i i, I guess just like the I, I i think change and progress is like one of those things that is such a like a loaded term to me yeah i get that i see it like I feel like we, we can't necessarily, I guess in ways we can compare, I feel maybe we're a little contained right now over here, but like consider like how they felt, like you mentioned before, like Italy compared to the rest of the world at that time and they felt that they were behind. Right. right? So like you gotta like, like keep it moving and keep it young and keep it up. Mm -hmm. Whereas like, I feel like now we have a very like, it's this uh, a friction between a weird like change to s- get to a point of stable non-change and then like a desire of non-change as the change. It, does that make sense? Like it's it's these weird. Absolutely not. Okay. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Please elaborate. <laughs> okay. So like 
the desire for things to change, right? Like people mm-hmm. want like like new, like oh, like they don't like how things are now. They want they they want they want things now to change to get to a point where things are better for like to to get to like a like a like a, a utopian type of point, you know, like not something like yeah. crazy or okay. absolute. I, but I like, see what you're saying. But that that's that's a change to get to a point of non-change. You yeah. Know? Where and then and then there's uh an opposition to that. This desire of a change to get to a point, like again, well, the desire of a non-change to get like in the desire of a change, where they feel like things are moving too fast now, and they want the non-change. Does that make sense? Yeah, I guess. I yeah, I, the it, it sounds to me like you know, on the one hand, we have people who are people who are like organizing and envisioning or and calling for the need of like radical transformation yeah. right all the way from like really like radical reform to just like complete abolition in order to get to like a desirable society exactly at, yeah, at, yeah. at which point you know then then you know th- things should stay as they are versus i guess people who who would say that in order for us to get to a desirable society, we need to, you know, sort of cling or cling, not even cling to, but just like reinforce mm-hmm. sort of the the order of the day. Yeah. What, what we have, the things that are being eroded. So that's what I'm saying. Like, like that's what it feels like as a contained thing right now. But like in reality, like if we maybe look at like the development of like other places in, in the world, like, like China or different places around like Africa and shit or like like maybe in the Middle East things are like that are coming up wild fast fucking te- like technological wise you know what I mean like I guess we're kind of in the same boat you know it's like we're trying to like deal with certain bullshits here but it's like we know we need to get on like technology and like Bitcoin type shit you know like we know we need to like advance like we need to keep up with this technology but like then there's also like this like the, the, that fear of the mystery that comes with it, you know? So at that point, it's like, it's the weird fear of danger because, like, danger has the risk of death. Death as in, like, a symbolic form or literal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, no, I mean, I don't, I don't want to um, sort of impose, retroactively impose, like, my contemporary understandings onto, like, what Marinetti was writing in like yeah. 1909, right? Yeah, 1909. Um, so I was saying like you know, but yeah, I, I definitely, but I definitely feel like the reverberations throughout history of like his ideas until now, yeah, and sort of like how 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 prominent they are still. You know, like they definitely lit the fire in, in the art world. You know, and yeah. the art was at the at the forefront of fucking pushing modernity. Right. And and that that's the other thing that I think is important, at least for me to remember, because I, I like sometimes when, I, when I'm talking about this, like I, I'm seeing it almost as like a political tradition or ideology, which okay, in some yeah. cases it is. But then I forget, like in the first degree, it was like an art movement. Mm-hmm. Or, so <laughs> it's good. to It's good to like remind myself of that. But that's like how tied up and, and involved everyone was. Right. You know? It's really it's really interesting to to see that, like, everyone involved in some type of way, and then like the people that wanted like didn't want to get involved like maybe got a little like ridiculed for like not going with it you know. It's interesting. Yeah. Uh, do you uh, what do you like about futurism from what you can see from this this first manifesto? As a political tradition or intellectual tradition or like as an art movement because i can't speak too much about the art i saw a few of like the the famous pieces like the city the city rises i think right that's the one of the main ones um it's sick (laughs) like the (laughs) art pieces are actually really cool i really like them okay um in terms of i mean the idea is that you know marinetti is trying to like traffic in yeah, he's definitely a really prolific writer. Mm-hmm. I mean, I just found myself really captivated, you know, while reading this. <laughs> like, it's really powerful. Yeah. Um. And it's all it it yeah. It's just it's really interesting. Just his idea of 
the like what a society ought to do with tradition right and its relationship <laughs> to the past and also like just the idea of sort of collapsing space and time in favor of of movement and change i mean that's <laughs> i mean it's a powerful idea like i can like i see how you know this captured the minds of like italians especially young italians everywhere you yeah. know because i think it it really hits on a pulse in a really poetic way it does yeah i think you know i i remember professor acts like he's like oh what did you think of the the futurism course and i was like hard like italian futurism is like the most inspiring movement for an artist it's the most inspiring thing i think just with like this manifesto alone for somebody that like wants to do something that they feel is new or scared to do it or feels like they have to like uh conform to whatever the like the academy or society or whatever around them is is pushing i think this is the most inspiring thing Mm -hmm. but you know there there's there's certain things where it's like you know it's really hard with a lot of this writing around like this time because it's like everything is so related to its field and its context. And it's like, you need to know the language that they're using, how they're using the language and how it connects to their realm. You know what I mean? And their project, which gets tough. I, I know like I did, I did, um, uh, and like an audio book of, of, uh, Bataille sacred conspiracy. And then I did one of Marinetti's war, uh, the hygiene of the world. Right. And I was cautious and actually deleted it at first because I like I was like, oh, fuck. Like, what if like somebody doesn't get it or understand it? You know what I mean? Um, But then it's also like I can't be responsible for that. Like I'm like everyone can do research, you know, but it does help to have a guide. But it's interesting because there, there, there are some things in there. It's like I don't, I don't fucking like war. <laughs> you know what I mean at all. Right. But I do, but on a, on a, personal and spiritual and artistic level, you know, on on something like that as as something that's like a uh, an inside thing, I totally fucking get it. You know what I mean? Like let's let's like you know like if you're you know like what is it in uh indecision fight yourself you always win you know right. like 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 yeah on some on some inside you type shit yeah like the parts of you that you don't like go to war with that shit and 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 bring the best out of yourself yeah. like you know i look at a lot of these on some like esoteric type shit you know which they're working with but they're also working with the other side because it's like it was niggas like go to war it was like fuck you so yeah yeah um, i think anyone would sort of resonate with these writings because i mean i think there's a there's a way in which you can separate or or maybe you shouldn't but like you know (laughs) on on the one hand you know the uh, the you know indisputably tragic and atrocious realities of war yeah you know that are being glorified here but then on the other hand there is sort of like the there is war as a sort of like literary or artistic device i mean obviously marinetti he's being literal here like actual war but you know, I mean, people, he's also pistic too. Like, yeah, at right. The same right. Time. Yeah, like people. I mean, p- people read n- novels and watch movies about like battles and war that like move us, you know, really Absolutely. deeply. And yeah. ma- that might be troubling because you know we're like, why are we being moved by like literature about militarism or like or patriotism? But you know, obviously, there's a undoubtedly like powerful um, pull. To, to these things because i mean they are they are powerful for it sure it probably speaks on some other level like a, a weird like level of um change in this desire of like newness and this desire of like uh something that like <clears throat> shakes us that reminds us that we're alive you know like the reason you would go like Things that are, like, shocking or jarring in that sense, you know, that yeah. reminds you. It pulls you, like, into a drama. 
historical yeah. drama. Yeah. Yeah. So, fuck war. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> it's it's a cool literary device for sure. Yeah. I feel like I had a vision of us talking about this. Yeah. Yeah. This is kind of weird. <laughs> I think I've been, I've been like my unconscious has been preparing for us to have this conversation <laughs> for a long time <laughs> to see, to see where we would go. And I, I didn't, I don't think I got triggered for anything, right? <laughs> I didn't defend too hard, right? <laughs> no, I think, I, I think, no, I mean, I feel like we were able to really flesh this out, you know, without a doubt, in, in, in a way that was like nuanced, which I appreciate. Like, I, I think that's increasingly a very important skill to have right being able to approach texts and things with like a, le- a level of nuance um i mean especially with something like this which is like so like e- explosive you know but yeah dude i'm glad i'm glad we read this and thank and thanks for like um you know assigning this one like for this episode because this was this was just really satisfying to read you know just as someone like who's interested in like history and Absol- politics and culture you know i, I feel like i learned so much from this this text that Marinetti, Marinetti read, but also like what it represented as yeah. like a historical, historical um, artifact. I think this also kind of like it sets the playing field. Like if we do read like any of the like the other art history shit that comes after, you know, like it really right. gives like a good context for like, okay, I see where this fits and yeah. like how this could have been an influence on this, you know. Yeah, and now now I get like. 80% of the things that you say. <laughs> Whereas before I didn't. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> like, yeah, I guess, I guess that's it. You know, just read this and then like read Bataille and understand why I say violence. You know, <laughs> I might be an asshole. No. <laughs> yeah. No. So, uh, yeah, that I, I, th- I think this will definitely like come back in a future episode. Without I, a I'm doubt. I'm sure because it's just so like the, the- theoretically, like the theoretical pull, you know, is, is intense. But yeah, so dude, I'm glad I'm glad we read this. Fuck this is yeah. a great conversation. Absolutely, fucking. Uh, I don't know how, how how do you how do you end something on Marinetti? Uh, I don't know. May, maybe like make some type of dad joke or something. He has like a shitty dad mustache. <laughs> <laughs> he ha- he had a good aesthetic. He did. Like no, I, 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 I saw. Dude, I was watching a video of of him and his cohort, like his crew. Mm-hmm. And I was like, God damn, like, yo, they got, they got drip. Like, they were clean. They, they, they got a look. Like they had the, the fancy pea coats and everything. They were up in Milan <laughs> doing their thing. They didn't get fucked. You know what I mean? Dude had mad money, cars and shit. <laughs> he was bankrolling, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's like this image of like, uh, Pratella and like, I sent it to my mom and I was like, this is uncle. And she was like, who's the mafia guy? But like, he was just clean with his hat and his fucking jacket, you know, dude? Like, he, he was doing his thing. He didn't give a fuck. Like, none of these dudes look like they would be, like, these, like, hardcore artists. You know what I mean? Like, they yeah, look right? like dudes that it's like, I don't want to mess with you. Yeah. But, like, like, I don't know what you're about. You're, like, you're, you're looking sketchy, man. <laughs> but you're clean. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. We're in, I gotta take a piss so we should end it alright okay. till next time peace peace